had to film this one. I mean, well, they all they all took the same amount of time. They all took six weeks to film, which is amazingly quick, and they did all the takes in in one take. Occasionally, if something went terribly wrong, it was take two. <laughs> and they went, take two! <laughs> when you're doing comedy, it's probably brilliant because you get the most immediate comedic reaction. And when you, you know, repeat double takes and things, they're never quite as sharp. So it's better if you can do it in take mm. one, really. Mm. But so because yes. Jungle was the very first one I did, it has a sort of special place in my heart mm. because it was, um, I mean, they were paying me very little money for carrying up the jungle and I lived in a bed sit in Belsize Park mm. and I had to be at the studio in um, Pinewood so early that the trains weren't running then, mm. you know. Mm. And I remember saying to Peter Rogers, well, can I have a car? I nearly had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, I'll tell you what, he said, you can have a car and no money or you can have a money and no car. <laughs> well, I was 22 and really, you know, mm. struggling financially and to even pay the rent. So um, I said, I'll take the money. And I kept <laughs> expecting to be fired all the time as well. I kept thinking they made a terrible mistake because I'd never, I'd done four years in rep. Mm. And then I went to meet Peter Rogers and I went in to read for the part of Jungle Girl. And I actually said in the interview, and nobody, you know when they say at home, don't practice this at home. Don't ever do what I do, because it's <laughs> crazy. I went in and I said to him, don't give me the part of the lead, because I, I've only done one small film part. Mm. You know, with Roger Moore, I think I did two lines. I've done all theatre, so don't give mm. me June. Find a small part. Mm. Don't, don't, it's too much of a risk for you. Mm. And then um, he laughed. <laughs> and, um, they took the chance and gave me June. So I was very nervous mm. for the first few days. I really thought I was going to be fired because Jerry Rogers, the, f the director, took me on one side and said, Jackie, um, I've got something rather difficult to tell you. And I thought, he's going to mm. fire me. He's, mm. seen, he's seen the first rushes and he's realized they'd made a terrible mistake. And I said, oh, what is it? And he said, well, this afternoon, we've got to throw a bucket of water in your face. And I was so <laughs> relieved. <laughs> oh, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> we're doing the love scene with Terry and we're wearing our leopard skin mm. um, outfits. And he had his little loincloth and I had my bikini, my leopard skin bikini. And we're doing this rather tender love scene and we're doing it for real because that's the best way to do comedy is to mm -hmm. do it. We're doing it and we notice everybody shaking with laughter. We, we take no notice. We think, this isn't supposed to be funny. This is supposed to be very touching and nice. So we continue it. So you'll see this when you see the film. He's, we're doing it, trying to do it very sort of mm -hmm. sincerely. Mm -hmm. And apparently he'd slipped out of his loincloth and was there for <laughs> everything to see. And everyone was looking at it and laughing. And the director leaned over to our makeup lady who was called Nora who was extremely sweet, but rather innocent, Nora mm. was. And he said to Nora, Nora, you didn't make it up. <laughs> <laughs> but some hysterical things happened off, you know, away from the camera. You can imagine with people like Charles Hawtrey and like Kenny Williams. <laughs> I was the new girl on the block, so I used to sit there and Kenny Williams would just tell me all these funny stories and, and Jerry, Jerry Thomas would come up and say, you know, Will you please come? We've got to do this. We're waiting to film, and Kenneth Williams say, "Oh no, I'm just telling you a story. <laughs> a story, in a minute, in a minute." And, you know, we're waiting to film. Mm -hmm. If you could hear, you know, what went on or see what went on, it was actually often funnier than the script. Mm -hmm. It was more outrageous, more uncontained and wild. Mm -hmm. Maddie, Jackie, how did you get on with Frankie? How did you get on with Frankie Howard? Brilliantly. He was lovely to me. Um, he used to tell me that he was a bit of a depressive person. And he used to say that, I think he lived with his sister. And he si said his sister always used to laugh in a sort of rather ironic way when the press used to ask her and say to her, it must be an absolute hoop living with your brother. <laughs> She's going, <laughs> yes, it's very funny. <laughs> but he was, he was a dear man. I liked him very much. And I um, met my husband when I was about 16, Douglas, who's over there. And he used to come on the set to meet me. And Dave, um, Kenneth Williams was far more interested in <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> when, are you bring, when, are you that, when are you bring that nice coffin of yours? <laughs> we were doing, um, we were 
Um, I think it was Karen at your convenience where we went on yeah, um, location yeah. to mm. Brighton, mm. and we were on the at the fairground, mm. and I was supposed to have a scene with Bernard, and he'd gone in to the um, ghost train with Maggie Nolan, and we were waiting for them to come out to do this scene, and they never came out, <laughs> and they never came out, and they never came out. <laughs> so in the end. Somebody went into the ghost train to mm. find them, mm. and they said, they, because Maggie's quite tall as well, mm. and they said they'd both leaned over <laughs> at the same time, and the whole thing had derailed, <laughs> and they were in, on the floor in the middle of the, where the ghost train was, because it was all black. Yes. And they had to be led out with torches. <laughs> yes. And everyone was saying, well, that's your story. You know? <laughs> Maggie Nolan, who, um, as you know, is very gorgeous and sexy. And uh, they came out <laughs> looking rather dishevelled. And, yes, and they said they'd come in, you know, that the whole thing had fallen over. <laughs> and you worked with Roger Moore. Oh, yes. So what did you do? Uh, that was the first film I ever did. And... Um, it was the thing called The Man Who Haunted Himself when I played his secretary and I think I had a very small part in that. And I remember going to the to the film to, to do the filming and they brought him a tray of stuff for tea. Mm -hmm. And they said, Oh, here's your tea, Mr. Moore. And of course they brought nothing for me, because you know, I was just a little small part actress. And he said Miss Piper must have some tea. <laughs> and they, they, they insisted that I had some tea as well, which I thought was incredibly nice. And then we roll on, we roll on, we roll on, and I'm then at Pinewood, mm -hmm. having doing the, the, the carry-ons, and we're um, all sitting around this table, um, screaming and shouting and throwing buns, and the rest of the Pinewood um, tables mm -hmm. were very sort of elegant and well-behaved. <laughs> anyway, Roger Moore is sitting over there doing a bond, I suppose, with mm -hmm. somebody very glamorous mm -hmm. and other ones. And we're on this table. And he came up to the table where I was. Surround, I was surrounded by everybody famous, except for me. And he said, good afternoon, Miss Piper. And everyone went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, I went and I went bright red. You know, I was probably covered in donut that somebody had thrown across the table. And um, I thought, how amazing, yeah. A, that he bothered to come, oh. B, that he remembered who I was. I'd only done the two lines with him. That, that was him. He was a complete and utter gentleman. Oh. Leonard Ruster was fantastic. He's the most professional, devoted person I've ever known. Because when it came to lunchtime, the rest of us would all go to the pub and have a sandwich and mm -hmm. half a lager or something. And Leonard would still be working on the script and with the director mm. and with the author and he never seemed to stop for lunch or coffee, he was always working on the script. He was absolutely, mm. I've never known anyone work so hard. Mm. Ray is now alive and well at 81 and he rang me last year at age 80 and said I'm doing a film in Grumpy Wife and I used to play one of the wives obviously and he said you can't play one of the wives darling, you're too old. He oh, said really? that's being played by Denise Van Outen but will you be my nurse? <laughs> and I said, yes, of course I will. And he, we all did it, a hundred of us did it, who'd all been in Rome for a while. The cast list is staggering. There's a hundred people who do cameos, and we all did it for a bunch of flowers and a bottle of champagne, and oh. all our fee went to the home for the old actors. Oh. All our fee went to charity. In um. fact, if you watch it, every small part is played by somebody that you'll know, Maureen Littman. Judy Dench plays a bag lady. Warren Littman's I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking June forward to the DVD. Thing. I mean, if you watch no, it, if you, else, you can hardly, so. you have to watch it twice, because yeah, you can't yes. hardly watch, I mean, Robin Asquith's driving a bus. <laughs> I mean, the people in my scene when I was a nurse, Bernie Cribbins was on crutches, for real, because he'd had a knee operation, but he was and Ross Abbott was lying in bed moaning, and <laughs> Nicky Henson had a cough, but his cough nearly stole the scene, because he went on cough. And every single mm. person you would know, um, so it's worth buying it just to see. Yeah, <laughs> You'd redemptive. need to see it, you know. You could have a quiz, a Christmas quiz. How many people could you spot? <laughs> Where was Judy Dench? You know, mm. She was the bag lady. You could have a quiz. Mm. Did you get to keep the leopard skin bikini? <laughs> Sadly, no. <laughs> no, I, sh I haven't got it, so I don't know whatever happened to that. Oh. <laughs> no. I don't know what ever happened to that. Mm. It's strange, because, I mean, there wasn't any interest in memorabilia then. They just went in the bin. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.